Hey guys, this is Nick, and I'm going to be showing you how to install a Dimbeer through Windows 10. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to go through our folders, and we're going to look for the locations of what we should have already installed. What we should have already installed. So I'm going to go to my C drive. Okay, so I want to know where a Dimbeer is. So I know a Dimbeer is here. Okay. I want to know where my Java is. Java JDK and my JRE are both in this folder here. And then lastly, I want to know where my Postgres, which is the database that I will be using. I want to know where that is. So that's in my program files. We have that right here. 9.5 is the version that I've installed. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create the paths between, uh, between our environment variables and basically these uh, installations here. So how do we do that? We go to we go to start and search. Okay, so I'm going to search environment variables. Okay, so I'm going to edit oops, there it is. Edit the environment variables. Okay. I'm going to click here environment variables. Okay, so this is what it looks like for Windows 10. Okay, so the idea here is we want to link the path. Okay, so we're going to create a new user variable for Nick. Nick is the name of my computer. So I'm going to click New. Okay, so we want to do three here. First one, we're going to call a demp here underscore home. Okay, so that's the variable name, and then the variable value. What you're going to do for that is you're going to go over here to your folder where we found a dimpier. Click on it. Okay, so this is where it's open. You click right here, and that's going to be the address basically in your computer where it is. So you're going to copy that. Control C, Control V, and you're going to click OK. Now what that does is creates a dimpier home. I already have it created, so I'm not going to click OK there. So we're going to do another one. Do Java Home. Java Home. Okay, same thing for the, va the variable and value. Go back to our C drive. Folder location for that. Okay, and the version that I have is JDK 1.6. We're going to want to click in there where these folders are accessed. I'm going to click up here where the address is. Copy that and paste it over here and click OK and it's going to create that path. And then finally Postgres home. So we're going to do another one. Postgres home. Okay, and then same thing. So I'm going to go to my program files. Postgres QL. Okay. And we go into my 9.5 version, copy the address, paste it over, click OK. Okay, so you see up here, this creates the three paths. Okay, so now what we have to do is in system variables, we want to look for path. So we see path right here, and we want to add to that. So we're going to click New. Oops. Okay. We're going to click on edit for path. So we want to edit to the path. And we want to add two things. We want to add the Java JDK. And we want to add... Um, where is it? The Postgres here. Okay, so what we're going to do... We're going to say edit. Or we're going to... Okay, on Windows 10, you have to create a new one. On the other Windows versions, you can just add to the end of the path. On this one, you have to create a new thing here. So what you would do would be uh, similarly to how you, you copied the address in your files here, you would do the same thing. So just like this. So I already had Postgres down there. And at the end of it, you want to do backslash bin. And that's how it ends it. Okay, and then you would click OK. Okay, and then similarly, you would do the same thing for your Java JDK 
And at the end of that one, you would click. You click new, you would paste the path, and then you would do a backslash bin on that one as well. Okay, and then say okay. So now your path should be created. Okay, so now after we've done the environment environment variables, we're going to go to our Dimpier folder. Okay, so I go to the C drive and then click the Dimpier, and now we're going to go to Run Setup. So Run underscore Setup, and this dialog box comes up. Basically, what we want to do is make sure that all the paths have been connected. Okay, so once the paths are connected. We make sure that everything in the setup box is correct. So you want this Java JDK to be like this. My web port is 8080. Database server, local host, database name, a Dempier. Port 5432, user, Postgres, and then the password will be whatever password you made for the database. Now this the default for this is Oracle. You want to set it to Postgres. That's the name of the database that we're using. Mail server is the name of your PC. Okay, so now before clicking test or save, what we want to do is we want to go into our Postgres database and create a new database. Okay, and this is going to set up a location for the installation in the database. So I'm going to call this Dempier. Not responding. All right. Okay, there it is. So a dump here. So now we can see that's there. All right. So now that we have that, click test. It's going to test to make sure that basically the paths are connected and that the database is there in Postgres. Okay, so all the check marks are good. And now we're going to click save, and what this is going to do is it's going to start importing tables into our database. Okay, environment variable, environment file saved, starting develop, deployment. You can restart the application server after program completes. Please check for more errors. Okay, so now what this is going to do is it's going to, it's going to start importing these tables here. And it takes some time. Okay, so we can see it's, it's importing in all those tables. At the most, this should only take two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and when it completes, I'll start it again. Okay, we're back, and it said build successful, but it closed, the dialog box closed automatically before I could start the video to show you. So, okay, so now what we want to do. After that says build successful, we want to go back to our C drive, and we're going to go back to Dempier, and then we're going to go to Utils, scroll down, and going to say run underscore import a Dempier. Okay, so this says press any key to continue. Okay, so now what this does is it imports approximately 700 and 20 tables into the database. See so it's saying create table. Okay, so I'm, similarly I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna pause this while it, it runs and then I'll start again when, it, when it's finished. Alright, and finally we can press any key to continue. All the tables have been in there. So let's go check and see what they look like here. So we got our Dimpier database. Oh, I'm sorry. So for first, to make sure that they're in there, we need to we need to exit Postgres and reopen it. I think you can just refresh the tables. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to look into our database. Okay, so we see it added a new schema there. Okay, new schema. And then we can see here that it imported 723 tables and 142 views. So we know that it did that correctly. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to open a Dimpier. So we're going to go to run a Dimpier. There it is. Run a Dimpier. Make sure that it opens correctly. Okay, so here we're going to click on server. So I clicked here, clicked on server, and we're going to make sure everything here is correct. Okay, so what we're going to do is test the database, and that's going to check to make sure that it's aligned with Postgres. We want a check mark here. So what we, we wanted to check mark here on test database. So once that's good, this red should go away here. And the default for a Dimpier is garden admin. So the username, user ID should be garden admin capital G capital A. Password is the same thing, capital G capital A. Okay, we'll click check. All right, and then your role is admin, client, garden world, and everything here is okay. And click the check mark. Click no here. And voila, we've successfully installed a Dimpier. Thank you guys for watching.